Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Let's Paint a Mini. So I figured we'd be doing something a little bit different today. What I'm looking at here is the Skeletal Champion. Uh, this is a, a Reaper Miniatures Mini. Um, it is um, uh, miniature number 77285, just a Skeletal Champion. As you can, as you might be able to tell, I actually cut the base off a little bit more than uh, than what it was. He originally came on this thing right here. Well, I just kind of cut straight across the base so that I could put him on my own base here. But anyway, the first thing I did here was my uh, my base coat of black. This is just a black paint. But the thing that I'm doing differently today is that instead of doing a regular sort of paint job, I thought I would kind of play around with this sort of. Um, palette of all grays and whites. I kind of thought, what if we just kind of decided that, um, you know, uh, what if we wanted to do a colorblind mini here? Let's say that there are no colors or anything like that, and let's just paint him like he's from some sort of old horror movie. So, like I said, the first thing that I have here is a base coat of pure black, and I think the next thing that I'm going to move on to is I'm going to go ahead and uh, do his actual uh, skeletal system first. When, when you're doing a miniature, uh, general rule is that you want to start with the low contours of a mini, you know, everything close to the sort of skeletal structure, and then you want to work your way out. So you want to do, you know, bone, then flesh, then skin, then clothes, then overclothes, and, you know, all that stuff. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to be doing right here is I'm taking this rainy gray color, and I don't need a whole lot of paint because there's not really a lot of bone going on with him. And then I'm going to take this medium-sized uh, Reaper round brush, so just a one-gauge uh, round Reaper brush, and I'm just going to coat the skull and the bones and that kind of thing with this color. One thing that I am going to do, though, is I'm going to leave the, the inside of the mouth as well as the inside of the eyes black. I think that those will look fine if we just leave those black. Uh, same with the nose, if you can. Let's just, uh, let's just go around the nose. I've never painted this miniature before, and I've never used a sort of black and white color scheme like this. So I honestly have no idea how this is going to go, but one thing that I like to encourage people to do with miniatures is that sometimes you just want to take some risks, and if you don't know what you're going to do, just do it anyway, and that kind of helps you to kind of just make decisions about certain things and just kind of not get hung up on stuff. You know, it's it's hard to get motivated to do a lot of artistic work and things like that, and sometimes it's healthy to just kind of s spontaneously decide, you know what, I'm just going to paint something. I don't even know what or how or anything like that, and just the more creative decisions that you make on the fly, the more willing that you are going to be to uh, to do more creative things. And I think that's just kind of a neat thing to do. And right off the bat, he's got a pretty pretty prominent face there. There we go. It's looking okay. Okay, I think that'll be fine. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do, while I've got all of this gray color out here, is I'm going to move on to a dry brush. Just taking a, uh, a small-sized uh, Citadel brand dry brush here. With dry brushing, you just want to load up a bunch of paint onto the bristles of your brush. And then you're actually going to wipe off most of it. So you've got, you know, a fair amount of paint on your brush there, but it's actually a very small amount uh, um, to the point where it's almost dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over the whole cloak with this. Uh, basically, we're going to make it look like his cloak is almost a black color. But if you dry brush the cloak with this, with this gray, then that'll uh, give it a little bit of depth. It won't look so flat. Okay, and then I think I kind of want the base to be a sort of um, black and gray kind of thing too, so with this sort of stone thing that he's uh, standing on here, I'm just going to go over it really lightly as well. There we go. Yeah, this miniature is going to be very dark, um, just very, very, um, 
very grim looking guy and I think that's kind of the thing that we're going for here okay uh, that was a really really quick step uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is um, take a little bit of uh, this honed steel right here you know I'm kind of skipping steps I wanted to dry brush the skull next I'll probably do that after this step actually so what I'll do is I'll just take this steel same thing I'll just coat this with the uh, uh, you know, get my dry brush loaded up here with this honed steel. And then this particular miniature is very armored. He's got a lot of armor going on. So we're just gonna paint over all of his armor with this honed steel. Let's go ahead and get the hilt of his sword there too. Already he's coming along nice and well there. Yeah, I suspect that this will be a really easy paint job that uh, pretty much anyone can do, so this is probably going to be a decent uh, beginner's um, paint job uh, if you're interested in learning painting and just learning kind of the basic techniques of, of dry brushing and all that. This would be a good miniature to do that for. Tell you what actually I'm gonna double back on what I was doing a little bit um, as you can kind of see now that I've been doing a little bit more of this dry brushing here he's got kind of a, um, a thing coming down off of uh, his his pauldron right there and then he's got another thing at the base of his uh, uh, at the base of his armor there so why don't we just uh, while we've still got our rainy gray out let's go over that really quickly brings out a little bit more depth in his, uh, in his sort of tabards there. I'll tell you what, I think that this thing behind his sword here, I think that that's the same kind of thing there, so let's just go over that really quickly. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush off. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to uh, some pure white, and I'm gonna go back to my dry brush. Okay, and now I'm just going to go over those uh, tabards that I just did with the gray, with this white, as well as the skull itself. You might get a little bit white, uh, a little bit of white onto the armor that you did. Eh, not a huge deal. It's not going to be hugely noticeable or prominent if you do that, so don't panic if you do. Tell you what, very, very lightly too, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to really lightly, you know, don't press very hard, but I'm just going to really lightly go over the cloak here too, and that'll just help bring out the, uh, the folds and the lines of the cloak a little bit more. I'll go ahead over the sword too. Why not? I'll touch up base here as well. Yeah, he looks uh, he looks nice. Again, just a, just a black and white thing. That's all that I'm going for here. Touch up the fingers a little bit too with this white. Why not? All right, rinse that brush off. All right, and next up, next up, I'm going to move on to a little teeny tiny micro detail brush here. Actually, before I do that, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's go back to some pure black a little bit. Um, the teeth, I'm going to cover just barely, just barely with a little bit of this black here. I think I'm going to use a, a small size Reaper round brush. This is a zero scale round brush. We'll just get a little bit of black onto the teeth there. And the reason for that is because if we have a base of black, and we go over each tooth just one by one with a little 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 tiny dot of white that will make those teeth really stand out so now I'm gonna move on to my itty bitty teeny tiny micro detail brush here all right I'm just gonna poke 
a tooth, you know, teeth onto, onto this black that I just did. And I'll just poke a little row of teeth onto the top and bottom of his mouth. There we go, that brings out his teeth a little bit more. I like that, okay. Tell you what, let's paint over each little finger here with this white paint. That'll bring those fingers out too. That brings that out. Yeah, this guy is just very cold looking, very, very dark. Very spooky. Okay. I'll tell you what, while we've got this white out, why don't we go ahead and uh, just have some more fun too? Why don't we uh, do some trimming on his armor? Yeah, that's kind of bringing out his armor pieces a little bit more. That's looking pretty cool. Go ahead and just do this across his chest here. All right, I'm gonna rinse off my brush really quickly. All right, I'm gonna move on to a little bit of um, some polished si polished silver. Uh, just a kind of reflective, but very light metallic color. I think I'll go back to my small brush. I don't think I quite need a micro detail brush for what I'm doing here. But I'm just gonna use the small brush to just kind of go over some spots on the armor here. So I'll go over this this chest piece right this chest piece right here. There we go. Let's go over the sword hilt a little bit. Go over this armor piece because why not? Hey, what? Let's go over these these shoulder pads right here. Okay, I think that'll be fine. And tell you what, because it's actually looking pretty good, I'm actually pretty happy with uh, with going over each armor piece with this polished silver like this. Let's just do that over the whole thing. So let's just go over each little armor piece all over the miniature with this polished silver. And let's just touch up each piece. That's pretty much all that I really want to do, to be honest. I'm going to rinse off that brush. I'm going to use a dry brush on that polished silver real quickly. And I think that little scepter that he's holding, I'm just going to go over it. Bring it out a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. All right. And then I'm going to go over the, um, the actual plastic base with a little bit of black again, since I was... Uh, getting some um, some white and silver and steel and all that all over it. Don't think I need a whole lot there. Doesn't really matter what brush you use, so I'm just gonna use this one right here. There we go, all right. That looks pretty solid. All right, and the very last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this matte varnish here that I use for all of my miniatures. Um, I just like to coat all, coat all of my miniatures with this matte varnish here just because it, uh, whoa, got out way too much there, but that's okay. All right. I just like to coat all of my miniatures with this stuff. It just adds a little bit of an extra layer of protection uh, for everything, and it just um, will kind of brighten up the, uh, the brighter colors that you want bright, and it will darken the darker colors. Just creates a little bit more of a nice contrast. We're just gonna go over the whole thing here. It doesn't really matter what brush that you use here either, just as long as it's kind of a large brush with a decent amount of surface area that lets you do it quickly. I would say definitely, um, if you are going to uh, paint Bones miniatures, this is a Reaper Bones miniature, um, definitely 
definitely use this this varnish um, because uh, the paint tends to come off of the really really soft plastic pretty easily so if you add this extra layer of protection that just kind of helps to keep the paint on there and make sure that it doesn't chip off or rub off or anything like that Yeah, I like this uh, the kind of thing that I was going for was sort of a um, you know 1950s 1940s universal you know um, horror monster kind of thing just uh, you know I felt like it was appropriate for uh, for Halloween for uh, the time of year and I also just thought I might do something for somebody who you know uh, might be colorblind or something like that you know I remember um, there was an episode of Bob Ross where uh, he was doing that he painted a, uh, a thing that was for for folks who were colorblind and it was just all black and white and I thought I would do kind of a similar thing here so that's what this is here um, so this is a skeletal champion. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed watching the video. If you'd liked it, go ahead and uh, throw it a like. And if you want to see more uh, miniature painting and more nerdy hobby stuff about board games and that kind of thing, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. So uh, thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you next time on Let's Paint a Mini.